Good evening, innovators. I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's had a fantastic week and weekend, and more importantly, is looking forward to the week ahead. Now, back again to bring you another cryptocurrency outlook. As promised, most of my free time, if I ever do have free time, is on the weekend. So I will try to get this out to you guys predominantly on the weekends, but it doesn't mean there may not be one throughout the week as well. And I am gonna try and aim to make this a consistent weekly thing for you guys as we were doing beforehand. So again, you guys have given us great feedback. Thank you very much. Happy to continue doing these in the time being as well. Again, these are gonna be relatively, not brief updates, they're always in significant depth. But the reason I make these videos for the public is because I provide a severe amount to the members. And on every Monday, we do a crypto weekly outlook, which can be anywhere from an hour to two hours long by the time I've gone through about 40 pairs and stuff. So one of the reasons why I want to do this publicly is because regardless of, you know, as we've covered, we've had some relative things here and there, but I like to give people an alternative view, a very logical, rational approach to view the markets and hopefully do this in a successful way. And that's why I try to be as transparent as possible with the holdings, the analysis, and just showing you how you should approach the market without being consumed by all of the absolute madness that's going on in the market, especially from an influencer marketing side as well. I just think it's so important to try and be a voice of reasoning in one way, shape or form. Whether people believe in it, whether people want to act on it, it's up to them. But I almost feel like it's my duty to do this kind of stuff. So first and foremost, let's just have a look at the fear and greed index over here. At the moment, it's kind of just yo-yoing back and forth between extreme fear and fear. And I personally feel we have a lot more downside to go in this market. Now, you guys who have been following us since the early videos that we've been making, you already know my opinions on BTC. I think that piece of junk is going to eventually crumble its way down below $10,000. And, you know, in the middle of a bull market, which I would argue we may not currently be in, and I would also argue it's something I've kind of been leading you guys up to you know, prepare for. Because as we can currently see, there's a big possibility there may actually already be a bear market in play. And I'm not gonna be one of them guys that starts screaming bear market, bear market, but it is kind of looking like that situation. And despite the fact, it's very important I clarify, despite the fact I believe overall, my main focus at the moment is this market going lower so I can start reinvesting some of those profits I've taken out throughout this current bull cycle and anyone that's saying it's not currently a bull cycle or it is i don't really care what it is i'm just here to make money and this is what i'm trying to get across to you guys as well i'm here to make money from the cryptocurrency market therefore i have no bias i'm completely neutral whichever way it goes i put myself in a position to benefit from that directional move now the crypto fear and greed index at the moment is currently situated in fear and in my personal opinion we may need this to go a bit more towards that neutral or even a greedy perspective because what I personally feel right now and what I'm going to do is a good example one of my good friends on Twitter the crypto whale he posted this the other day and this is absolutely hilarious because this is something I constantly tell you guys you know this is who we're up against and personally one of the biggest recommendations I could give you guys before we even go into any form of market analysis, technicals, whatever that may be, please do not listen to these kind of people. First and foremost, these thumbnails, I know they're meant to be clickbait, but looking like you're on the receiving end of a gangbang with rocket emojis and stars and all of this stuff in the background, it's not a very good look. Number one, it's not very professional. It's very, very cringy. It makes me feel physically sick and want to vomit. And more importantly, you have to ask yourself, these individuals are rarely showing you real capital. They don't really know what they're doing. Most of them are just influencers. And you have to remember, these influencers do not give a shit what consequences their actions will do on you because it doesn't affect them. So they can post all of this stuff. Don't sell, hodl, hodl, hodl. And then the market crashes, for example, 80%, just a random number. They're not affected by that because they're probably not even holding crypto, but they are enforcing you and almost manipulating you into doing what they are cluelessly sharing. And on the receiving end, you are the one that suffers the consequences. Whereas these people, they're fine. They're living stress-free because they're making their money from promotions, from YouTube ads, from marketing, from shilling other coins and projects, and basically making money from everything besides the cryptocurrency market. And the problem is, it's, it's these individuals that have suddenly become the voice of authority and the voice of apparent reasoning in the cryptocurrency market. But I think it's just a general warning, very, very important during these times, 
just ignore, you know, for someone to, who, who even takes a selfie like this in the first place? Do you not feel a little bit like a Wally Wombat? I don't know. But let's go over to here first and foremost, have a look at some on-chain analysis. Now, I don't share the on-chain sides too much because, you know, a lot of the comments sometimes say, this guy does not factor in the on-chain side. Well, as a matter of fact, I've actually written an entire on-chain metrics book that's available for the members and I frequently update on the on-chain side as well. But as with anything, this can often be a form of manipulation as well. And that's what people need to realize that a lot of people understand that on-chain metrics can be a useful additional tool, almost like an indicator on a chart, but often it can be lagging, or more importantly, it can be prone to manipulation as well. But one thing I do frequently look at, as you guys know, is I like to do the opposite of the herd. And I actually tweeted this earlier that I got to where I am today by doing the opposite of the herd and the opposite of the majority of people. And I will continue to do that throughout time. And I think a good example of this is actually BTC. Now, as I started scaling out profits on XRP during this period of time around here, and then we saw the crash and then, you know, we went up a bit higher. During this point in time, if you remember, when we made the video saying we were wrong, in theory, we weren't really wrong because we did say it could go back to the highs. And we're gonna be breaking all of this down shortly as well. But as a matter of fact, when you're in that moment, and the majority of people are so engrossed in the bullish candles, you will notice that my candles are white with green wicks because at this point in time, one thing I said to the members, the innovation members was, we are not using colored candlesticks anymore. We're gonna go back to neutral candlesticks whilst the market is currently in this kind of situation because the last thing you need is to be messing up your rationality with a green bullish candle at such a critical time. And by actually eradicating those candle colors, not even green, before it used to be one green, one white, or all of them green, I don't want green or red, I want neutral. And the minute I actually switch back to the white candles is how I managed to decipher this 40K drop over here as well. So it kind of just shows, it's, it's kind of a good bit of proof to throw out there that I prefer not to use candlestick colors because it takes away the emotions and I have absolutely no emotion in this game. I'm, we are all simply participants of a much larger game being played by large entities here. And it's very, very important. You do not get engrossed in what these absolute plonkers are trying to get you to do. So it's very important to avoid that stuff as well. Now, what I'm trying to get to by doing the opposite of the herd and the opposite of the majority is, as I started scaling out profits, maybe it's better to use the XRP chart for this on the weekly before we break down this analysis. Now, as I started scaling out the profits throughout this point in time, it did go a little bit against me and that granted there could have been a bit more money made. That doesn't bother me. And what happens is when you're going against the herd, the herd are the people who are buying into these candles. So they do not want to hear anything that will impact their investment, which is where the word FUD came from. FUD is no different to using the word conspiracy theorist. You say anything related to the truth, people say you're a conspiracy theorist. You say anything that could impact anyone's delusional kind of ideology of where their investment will go, they will label it FUD. But often FUD is a very critical and realistic approach to evaluating where this market currently is. Because something I also said to the members recently was, we have to remember, in fact, I put this on Twitter, we have to remember at this current stage in the market, this is not adoption really. And in fact, a lot of these projects are not even complete yet. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, but in theory, Ethereum is not even 100% complete yet, let alone the gas fee problems. F2.0 is still underway, it's not fully completed. What you have to realize is you are not investing in this, this current phase of the market is just one big bubble. This is not the adoption phase. This is the speculative bubble where we are seeing the shit coins, the meme coins, everything going up in insane proportions and valuations based off speculation and manipulation alone. There has nothing, there's nothing really involved in this market that has anything to do with utility whatsoever. And the reason I love XRP so much and the reason why all of my altcoin profits are being prepared to go back into XRP is because when we see this bubble eventually die and it almost certainly will at some point eventually crumble, we have to be logical and protect ourselves here. And we do not know it doesn't matter what you think about the SEC lawsuit being settled. The judge himself or themselves do not know yet what the outcome of that case will be, unless of course you believe it's rigged. So you have to be completely accepting of the fact that you do not know what the future holds. You can read what you want, you can decode all of the riddler's messages. The brutal truth is we do not know what the future holds. We can believe in stuff, we can invest off that belief and research, but as I always say, 
we do not know where the market's going to go. And the reason why I provide the opposing side of the coin is because no one's really going to provide this to you. And also it allows you to think a bit more critically outside the box and understand right now you're investing in incomplete or incomplete, sorry, technology that is not yet finished. And at the moment, until we see completion and actual utility, right now we are speculating on what we hope to succeed in time, not what projects are succeeding. If you go back in time and look at the coin market cap from 2013, 2014, even to the present day, besides Bitcoin and XRP, not many coins are really in the top 10 anymore. And we have seen a continuous shift over time, which is why market cap in its present stage is absolutely meaningless to me. It means absolutely nothing. And I just think it's very important to start the video off with this manner, because what I'm going to say and what I'm going to be showing is a lot of people may not like. But at the moment, this is my current theory. And I feel if you're willing to accept what this collective of individuals say, you know, 100K next, 3000 percent, 17000 percent. You also, if you're going to accept the 100K possibility, you have to also be open to the opposing side as well. Because if you're only fixated on that 100K target, which again, the majority of people are fixated on, you're setting yourselves up for potential disappointment. And that's why I do not care which way it goes, as long as I'm participating at the right price and getting out and in at the correct price, it doesn't bother me what happens next. And that's why I prepare the opposing side. Because when this is all happening in the moment, and you know, the reason we made the video saying we were wrong is because we expected a potential lower high to maybe come into play. However, we actually came in and took out these highs and then crashed anyway. So overall, my analysis came through, but we went higher first. And this is what you guys need to understand. In this point in time, when people start going to me, you know, you're wrong. What happens now? Haha, <laughs> we've broken all time highs. They're watching on the daily time frame, the four hour. They're watching on these lower time frames and they're not really processing what could be happening on a weekly or monthly basis. And once we saw this on the weekly, I straight away said to the members, guys, this may not sustain. And it obviously didn't in the end. And that's why in that moment when you're going against the herd, it may not happen immediately. But whilst it's unfolding over time, let's just say you scale without profits here and then it broke all time highs. If you were to tell someone that, they'd go, bro, you're insane. You need to, you need to be back in the market. This is gonna go to the moon. But those people know absolutely nothing. And in fact, let's be honest here, none of us really know with 100% certainty what is actually going on here. All we can do is analyze to the best of our advantage. And that's why I break down the different perspectives to the best of my advantage, because it gives me a bigger edge by preparing for these possible scenarios. And from what I can currently see at the moment, I'm gonna give you the bullish side, like most people are looking at and I can see what they're seeing. However, I'm seeing something a bit different at the moment. And if anything, it actually looks like overall, my analysis is unfolding. Now, factoring in overall, I believe there's a big possibility now. BTC could even be revisiting the 30K region. And it's something I'm starting to open up for because I personally believe once this level is revisited or once we've potentially manipulated this level, there could be a final drive higher. But personally, once we start coming into this level once again, despite a potential rebound, I think this market's gonna trickle all the way back down. Now, unfortunately, below this support floor over here, there is nothing to 20K. Below that level, there's nothing down to 10 to, you know, even 4K, 5K. And I know people say that's unrealistic, but it's only when the market crashes and you can very quickly realize how everything can change. When we're up here and that four hour candle is pushing through all time highs, no one would ever believe the possibility of this market going down again is ever gonna happen. But that's because they have no patience and they cannot foresee into the future. However, on the opposing side, if you understand that the minute this crash comes through, suddenly people go, oh, that all the people screaming 100K, now they're saying, guys, buckle up. We may, we may be seeing 40K again. We may be seeing 30K now, but they don't wanna consider that until it's too late. And these are the people that follow these individuals here and buy every symbol pump on the way up. And I think it's very important to understand. Again, I know I haven't broken down the charts yet, but I just wanna be sharing a little bit about what's on my mind at the moment, because I think it will be helpful to a lot of people. You know, the goal overall is to accumulate your holdings in the cryptocurrency market. However, I personally feel people do that in the wrong way. You should not be buying every single week, regardless of price. You know, the goal is to accumulate the holdings, but you must be doing that in the correct manner. And when I say correct manner, I mean not buying here or buying here, because yes, your holdings will potentially be growing, but you are also piling in money into an asset space that is 
pretty much predominantly speculative. If you are also continuously accumulating at higher prices, it doesn't matter how many coins you hold, you are constantly averaging in higher and higher and higher. So yes, it may eventually one day, or even in the next rally, if we do see a significant move, it could go to 80k. And the reason being for that, I'll clear these trend lines for a second, and just plot the current Fibonacci, of course, which is holding the 78.6%. So naturally, people could be expecting such a scenario. Now, I personally don't think we are going to see 100k in this cycle. Too many people are expecting it. Everyone wants it, which means the opposite is more than likely going to happen. Weekly candle was broken below that 61.8% fib. It's now rejecting this level as resistance, which is almost a warning sign in itself. This could already be gearing up for a rollover. However, I do feel there could potentially be one small push needed, which would get the fear and greed index back to a regular standpoint as well. If we go over to the on-chain side quickly, I like to follow the number of addresses with balances that have more than 10k BTC because these are considered whales. So what these guys are doing can often give you a telltale sign on what may be happening next. Whereas overall, I like to get gauge an overall full market overview with the number of addresses that have a balance over 0.01 BTC, which predominantly could be considered the majority of the market. Now we know the majority fail. So by understanding this metric, the more we see this accumulating and growing larger, the more participants we know are involved in the market, which means the more people we know are likely going to get absolutely wrecked in the event of a continuation lower. So the more I see this growing, granted you could say it's adoption, but let's be real, no one's really using BTC, they're just holding BTC. BTC does not really have a real life use case because it's rarely being used for its true purpose. It's now considered a store of wealth, not a peer-to-peer -peer payment protocol as it was originally intended. Now understanding that the number of BTC addresses with 10K plus has gone higher, that tells me there may be some whale activity and large market activity, large participants, whoever they may be, there is a large quantity of buyers involved in this market that could be accumulating coins or transferring from wallet to wallet. So that tells me they are buying in anticipation. It also tells me number of addresses with balances 10K. Again, MicroStrategy is a great example. Now, if you have 10K BTC, or let's say you buy 10K BTC here, you don't need what the shill shills are telling you. You don't need that. You don't need the 300K BTC or 100K BTC. You literally just need price to go back up to here and you've made more than enough money and you can get out. And this is something that's probably quite important as well is, you know, everyone started buying prior to this crash because MicroStrategy was buying. And micro say, Michael Saylor, sorry, I could call him Micro Saylor because he's fucking useless. But Michael Saylor apparently bought the dip. Now, as I kind of say continuously, not every dip is intended to be bought. And just because these larger institutions are buying, I discussed this with the members the other day as well, just because large institutional people are buying or people are buying in large quantities, it doesn't mean you go and do the same. Michael Saylor has never realized a single profit on any of his holdings. And you have to remember these institutions have very deep pockets. And also funds in particular, you know, when you see people saying, you know, this funds bought this much BTC, they are a business like any other business and they're in the competition of acquiring customer funds. They want investment from customers. Now, by racing to jump onto the crypto bandwagon, they technically don't really care what price they buy at because guess what? They charge them a performance fee on a quarterly or annual basis, whatever their structure is. They're probably taking commissions even for investment purposes. So by looking at all these individuals who are buying BTC, it doesn't mean they know what they're doing because they have a lot of money. A lot of people do not understand this space and a lot of individuals that own funds or institutional funds, they are looking to purchase BTC for the sake of onboarding clients that want to get involved in a slightly riskier asset. But it is just one big business. So just because they're buying, it doesn't mean they know what they're doing. If you followed where Elon Musk bought, you still wouldn't be in a very good situation. And Michael Saylor is only up around 1.1% in total, to the best of my knowledge, on his holdings from where he's bought over time. So when you kind of put that in theory and the fact he hasn't realized any gains, if you're following what the media tells you, or even what Bloomberg or Forbes is telling you, you're not going to be profitable. When have you ever read a news article or followed what someone else is doing in the media and ended up successful? If that was the case, we would all just sit and watch Bloomberg all day or read the Coin Telegraph, and we would all be multi multi millionaires at the click of a finger. Life does not work that way, and every no one out there is your friend. They are not there to help you. Again, they are not your friends. They do not know what they're doing. 
They are there to make money off you. It's very, very simple. So you need to do the opposite of what these people are doing. And the more you see that kind of stuff being publicized, the more you know the opposite is likely to happen. And there's a reason when they say, you know, price will never go down here again because the retail will buy. That's absolutely incorrect. I don't really know anyone that bought around these low prices because they were too scared. History will often repeat itself. Humanity, human psychology will always stay the same. People will never, ever change. The markets may change with cycles, but human psychology will never change. And we, which you know, when you put it in perspective, most people are in crypto. They don't even look at the charts. A lot of people are watching their cryptocurrency investments fluctuate on Blockfolio or Coinbase. They're just looking at prices. So you need to understand a lot of people are not even factoring in the charts at all because they don't understand. So most people, especially now with this current speculative bubble, people are bombarding their money into cryptocurrencies and they are monitoring without charts. So they would be watching on Coinbase, for example, and watching BTC go to 50K. And these are the same people that go, we're going to 100, we're going to 100. But they're just looking at prices on, on a ticker feed, basically. So if they see BTC go from 50 to 55, they're thinking, bloody hell, this is never going to stop. But they're not evaluating the technicals that are being presented at this time as well. Now, imagine if I'm already thinking that this may come up one more time for a little retest. Hopefully it does because I want to take some more profit off the table. I'm not going to obviously give my buy and sell limits. So I'm currently in a position, XRP in particular, the current play. Remember, the members will always get the buy limits, the sell limits, the market executions, whatever I do with those XRP holdings that I publicize, I will then show the public after the members have, of course, received the information. But I still strive to keep it as transparent as possible. And as you can currently see, we are currently sitting just above 400,000. It's constantly dipping back and forth. So we're about 200K down in total from what we were once at at the very top. But this again goes hand in hand with what I've been preaching you guys. My holdings are down, but the profit taken is more than the holdings now. And this is what I've been trying to drill home to you guys. In this moment in time where the market is going up, I'm taking the profits out and the market may go a bit higher. Then it goes down, then it goes back up again. And people start going, you've missed out, you've missed out. No, because when that time comes where it always will go lower, you will thank yourself later down the line. And if you follow the majority of people, you probably end up buying around here instead. So I missed out on a little bit of a pump over there. I actually was meant to sell here and there. And because of this now playing out perfectly as I originally intended, July, August, I'm now following the flow and I'm expecting another pullback on the market or coming into this territory where I'm going to consider taking some profits off the table. Hopefully we can get a push up higher first because what I want to do is I want to consider taking out anywhere from 50 to 100K out of my XRP holdings. But again, the goal here is to have the profit taken be valued more than your current holdings when a bear market comes into play. The last thing you want to be doing is be the king of unrealized gains during a bull run, thinking you're a genius, and then when the bear market strikes, you have done nothing to protect yourself or potentially capitalize even further in these situations. You become a millionaire by investing in a bear market. You do not become a millionaire in a bull market. You need to be investing in the bear markets to become that millionaire in the bull market. So my goal here is to get rid of this 85,622 XRP if we can get an additional push higher. And that will hopefully be around 50 to 100K depending on the price it may push up to. And again, the members have those orders already. We're waiting for those to come through. But again, this is where being very neutral comes into play. Because if we do not see a push higher, although my levels are holding perfectly at the moment, even if we fail to see a push higher and we just started dumping lower, same as BTC going back to 30K, I'm currently scoping overall disregarding i don't really care for the current upside to be honest with you it doesn't really concern me because overall i'm expecting this to start rolling over into what could very easily be the sub 50 cents territory where it may even go a bit lower and i have certain buy limits set in place to factor this in as well now price currently resistance is up here technically support is down here let's just zoom this out a little bit there i'll get rid of that for now price is at the resistance here there's a support down here. Price is currently situated in the middle of this. As we said over here, everyone's looking for that $1 support because they're saying it's gonna hold forever. Because everyone expected this to hold, I knew it would break. Now, if we come back up and retest, fantastic. That will be better because profits can be taken within the overall zones that I'm looking for. There's also some Fibonacci's as well that make things pretty simple to show you where this is going. Now, overall, you guys know 
my target is for this to go back to 20 to 10 cents. However, there could be several movements in between this that could lead us to 20 cents, which is gonna allow me the opportunities to take that risk and reinvest profits if we see a movement lower. On the opposing side, if we do push back up, I'm gonna take some more profits off the table, wherever that goes. I'm gonna leave 100K XRP remaining. Once I've taken out the 85.622, leaving 100K there. And the reason being for that is, if it does start blowing through the roof for whatever physical reason, at the moment it's not looking very likely, I'll take the remaining 100K out wherever that may go. But at the moment, I may even just take it all out depending on where we can go. So at the moment, overall, we are expecting this to start crumbling down at some point next year into the 20 to 10 cents region where I'm hoping to hopefully have at least half a million to re-put back into the market at these prices. And what I'm currently thinking is, is this the bull run already happening? And personally, it is looking like this is now becoming a bear market. Everyone's still talking about alt season. And something that I saw was the discussion regarding the BTC dominance. Everyone saw it come back and people were messaging me going, this is bearish, this is bearish, it's gonna break. I personally think the BTC dominance is gonna go back up to that 47, 48% territory. And this is just short term. This is just the current range. It's now fluctuating in a range. And naturally, we would be expecting it to come back to the top of the range. And of course, if that BTC dominance is going to grow, then we can understand whether or not BTC comes up a little bit and then rolls down. If BTC goes down to that 30K region and the dominance starts growing, it's going to drag everything else down with it. And just because we've seen alt seasons before, it doesn't mean it needs to happen again. And the more the market's behaving in this manner, I'm starting to lose faith in the possibility that we are gonna have an alt season. In fact, we have had an alt season. Go to the monthly chart. How on earth could that not be an alt season? You know, how greedy can people really be? You go over here, LTC, it has taken out the highs. We have made a lower high. This is already a bear market in play. And you guys remember from the original videos what I said and what I expect LTC to do around that 40 to $20 level. A, B, C, D. It's the perfect target where everything I believe is gonna come back down to the bottom and reset the playing field. Because this is alt season. You know, how could this not be enough for some people? It's absolutely beyond me. And from a monthly perspective on LTC, we're already seeing constant rejections and whether or not we get a movement higher is currently irrelevant at this point because it looks like we are currently on schedule to slowly but surely break to the downside. And at this current point in time, disregarding any potential upside, it has come in to take out the highs. It's got everyone excited. And my current theory is, especially with XRP, this is a bull run. It hasn't gone back to all time highs. That's better for me because I know if I buy at the bottom, there's a bigger possibility that it is gonna go back to unfulfilled territory. And I can say this logically, you know, people going BTC 100K, you've got no reasoning for that. You've got no factuals, you've got no technicals. Nothing can really guide you to 100K unless you start fabricating stuff. You can say adoption, you can say institutions, whatever you want, but we've kind of proven that even when institutions buy, the market goes down. Another thing you need to realize as well is that institutions, they can afford because of their deep pockets to buy at these prices. If it rolls down, that's where they use futures to hedge their positions. So they can kind of go public and say, guys, we've just bought 300,000 BTC. And everyone goes, yeah, 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 let's buy. They're buying, but guess what? They can hold that drawdown because they're probably making money on the downside from hedging their positions anyway. It's the same as where I shorted BTC at first from 16K. And the reason being was at 16K, I was already long from the bottom. So I took some hedges in case it did go into a bear market again, where I could make some money on the downside to take them profits out the shorts and then reinvest at the bottom again. Now that didn't work out. So when you see people saying stuff like wrecked, 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 please do ne like, never get yourself into a situation where you're wrecked from margin trading. I actually do not trade margin, um, sorry, I do not leverage trade crypto at the moment. I haven't done for a while because I do not need to. It's very dangerous to be leverage trading the market at this point in time. It's actually a lot better to just wait for a single sell or a buy to come in at some point in time. But even 30K for BTC is way too high in my opinion. And again, we are currently just sucking in dumb money after dumb money. And one thing I said in the very, very early phases is if when we started approaching this area, even over here, I said, guys, if we do go back to all time highs, this could essentially be a blessing from the market. This could essentially be your second chance and opportunity 
to take profits off the table before a potential rollover. And I do truly hope that some people did listen to that and just consider taking something off. You know, almost a $70,000 BTC, you have to consider taking some money off the table. The last thing you want to be doing is buying up there. But looking at this dominance at the moment, that's just the range we're looking at as well. If we do zoom out and look at the overall bigger picture on the monthly, if anything, it's looking more likely that the BTC dominance is going to absolutely rock it all the way back up above the 60% territory. And because everyone's looking on the daily, this is where people are going, look, it's bearish, bro, it's bearish. No, not really at the moment. It's kind of made a head and shoulders as well. People say, why are you obsessed with head and shoulders? But it does work. Nothing works 100% of the time, but if you do combine it together, you get a pretty good idea on what could be happening next. So my biggest concern at the moment is number one, this simple move here alone could be enough on the BTC dominance to bring the market back down towards where BTC may be going towards 30K. May have a little bit of a cheeky retest back down. But overall, if you look at the bigger picture, it's actually kind of consolidating at the moment for what could be a major trend line retest. Push that through over there, retest the bodies as well. Cuts through, you can even push it over to here to see how it's broken through, pushed back up, rejected, retested. This could easily go all the way back up to here. And that would of course be potential bear market territory as well. So it's like you need to consider it doesn't mean we're in a bear market now, but it does look like it to me. And my current theory is with XRP in particular, because we are currently in a phase where everyone believes they're a genius, everyone believes this is perfect. Now, I've always had the theory that we are not going to see a true blow through the roof on XRP until we see the utility run. And in my opinion, this was um, something I mentioned to the members. Now, what we're seeing at the moment is a lot of clues. I like to take clues from what the regulatory bodies are saying, what the governments are saying, and the SEC in particular, or the banks and governments, they're all going down the same narrative of we need to protect the consumer from this Wild West dangerous market. Now, I personally do not think XRP is gonna go much higher until the court case is settled, number one. Again, do not try and predict it. These things take time. Even when there's clarity or answers after a discovery phase, it creates more discussions. It's not like a party, it's not like the SEC are just gonna go, hey, we give up. We do not know the outcome, so we should not be factoring in a timeline because you'll be disappointed. But what I do believe is we need to see this bubble pop. And at the moment, this is the bull run for me for this year. And because we've now broken lower, over here I was neutral and thought maybe if $1 does hold, we can consider a possibility. But now we've broken the structure. Overall, people are going, yep, yeah, higher, I mean low, higher, low, higher, low. But I think this is a trap. I absolutely think this is a trap at the moment. I know it has also held the 78.6, but XRP as well has broken below that 61.8%. So overall for me, there is a possibility here that we are gonna be revisiting much, much lower. And before we see a true parabolic blow through the roof, I think this is gonna bottom out first. I've always had this theory since the beginning because I think the SEC case will be settled once price has bottomed out. And my theory here is regarding the SEC is that if they come out and do anything else, they've already been absolutely bollocked for what they've done with XRP because they harmed investors during this cycle. Now, if you followed the technicals and my analysis, you would have been able to execute this perfectly because you know the charts tell you what fundamental reason will later be used as an excuse for price manipulation. This was classic manipulation. Is it a coincidence it pumped up before the SEC announcement? Of course it wasn't. Everything is calculated, whether that's institutions, whales, or algorithms. Every single move in the market is premeditated. And the most important thing to do as well, actually, is look at the markets without the ideology in the back of your mind, whether it's conscious or subconscious. Ignore the ideology of a bull market and ignore the ideology of alt season. If you can strip away the underlying kind of outlook, because a lot of people, they look at the market and they try and analyze to fit in with the narrative of alt season or a bull run. If you've been watchful, if you've been investing at the right prices, 1600% is one hell of an amount of a gain in a single year which is the same as BTC's done as well. So it hasn't gone to all time highs, but 1600% is a fantastic return on investment if you got in at the right prices. So what you need to understand here is, this could easily come back down. Why do you think the SEC are allowing futures to suddenly come forward, new futures ETFs and all of this stuff? Because that's what caused the last market crash. 
Now, wouldn't it make more sense if the SEC came out and said, guys, we're going to ban crypto? Everyone would go crazy because it would be justified as a way to cause the crash. They don't want to take the blame for that. So why not release the futures ETFs and all of these other forms of derivatives or exchanges, whatever it may be they are utilizing that allows people the facilities to short crypto? Wouldn't it be better to allow the market participants to wipe out the retail investor? Because remember, there is a significant amount of dumb money in this market. You can be offended by that all you want, but it's the brutal truth. It's called dumb money because they don't know what they're doing and they don't take profits. No one really takes profits here. Now, because everyone's caught up in this hype of, again, Doge, Shiba, Flocky, all this rubbish, I prefer just to miss out altogether. Doesn't interest me to get involved. These people need to be wiped out. Now, wouldn't it make more sense for the market to be manipulated and crashed down? Wiping out all of these people, all of the retail start going, it's a scam, it's a scam, I've lost all this money. And then the SEC can step in as the savior and go, guys, we need to regulate this space. We cannot allow these shit coins and all of this stuff to be traded because it's dangerous. And that's where you see true utility begin to thrive. And my personal opinion is the market's gonna crash first. At the moment, this is my thought. The market's gonna crash first. Then it's a justification for the regulatory bodies to step in saying, we are the heroes, we're here to save you guys. We need to regulate this space. And then whatever is truly adopted and has utility, AKA XRP, has a better possibility of absolutely rocketing. Whereas even BTC may not recover from this and people can say what they want. But there is no guarantee here anything is going to survive in you know later down the line that we are all speculating in this phase nothing is truly happening but that's why my bet goes with xrp because they work with banks and governments cbdc's constantly crossing my mind cbdc's once they're out once they're fully integrated are they going to allow you to just trade cryptos or utilize cryptos if they have their own coin it's going to be the most centralized thing we've ever seen in our life. And we can see how much power the governments are grabbing at the moment with this COVID stuff that's going on. And we can see this all transitioning into the cashless society, the centralized era, power control, surveillance, all of that malarkey. There's not even a guarantee this will be, you know, available to trade in the future. Forex trading may be CBDC based. We don't know that yet. But I accept that possibility when I make my investment. And it's, it's crucial you guys understand that. I invest understanding I am taking a risk. The problem is now crypto has become a cult where people believe that because you're seeing all this bullish news and stuff, they're going to be multimillionaires. And if that was the case, then, you know, there would potentially be a shift in the wealth gap and it would be tightened. But that's not going to be the case, not ever. And we have to be very realistic with how the world is in this present day and how the world is currently operated. There are governments in control that control the world. And unfortunately, they're not going to allow you to gain power by investing in a digital asset that you believe is digital gold. It's unfortunately, it's just very unrealistic. And I would argue people are more crazy to believe they're gonna you know, tighten the wealth gap with BTC or stop centralization and all of that rubbish. You know, BTC fixes this, BTC fixes that. I think it's a load of rubbish. And we also need to accept the possibility that one day you may not even be able to trade cryptos. They're heavily against it. Whether it is a threat to them or not, I don't know, I don't care. But all I know is people saying, you know, the banks and governments do not understand crypto. Believe me, they know a lot more than we do about this stuff. And we've seen now the CIA have been developing projects with blockchain technology. That's not a secret anyway. They, they pretty, the NSA and CIA, they created the SHA-256 protocol. So it's safe to say BTC could simply be almost a beta test before we go live with CBDCs. It could simply be a way for them to start testing how to potentially find flaws and black back doors in this technology before integrating into a whole different kind of economy that we're heading into. So I think at this current point in time, after seeing this crash, it has now created the possibility of support flaws broken. There could just be some simple retests on the cards over here as well. I mean, we're now in some relatively bearish trends. There are some trend lines over here as well that you need to be watching out for. I mean, even this trend line here cutting through, this could be one, two, the third retest is often manipulative. So this could easily just be coming in to dip in and roll over again. My biggest concern is after the crash is the daily wicks down here as well. Huge wicks to the downside. Now, historically we've seen when a spike comes into play, there is a retest. And I think this is what's necessary to bring that euphoria in. Wicks will always be filled, especially large downside ones. And at the moment there is not a lot of bullish momentum. Over here, huge crash, 
large wick. We pushed up, filled, gave people hope, we then filled in the wicks and broke through this level. The same could be said here, and that takes us to 50 cents, which is where I believe it could even be dipping a bit lower than that. BTC is no different. That weekly wick is absolutely horrific. Let me just get rid of that for a second. That wick needs to be filled in my opinion. We've seen it time and time again. Wicks down here came up, came in to get filled, then pushed up daily. That's a huge wick that cannot be disregarded. So what I'm thinking is, and when I say it's gonna go lower, it will go up a little bit and people go, you're wrong. How do you feel now it's going higher? But no, just be realistic. It may spike up, break through this trend line, come into a crucial region, there's Fibonacci's here as well, A, B, C, that leads us down to 30K. Go over to the CME chart, the gap's just been filled. Four hour time frame, gap's been filled perfectly. You rarely see that. I was actually expecting a bit more and I still do at the current point in time. Now understand that every single gap historically has been filled besides the downside ones. $32,500 is down below, that's a huge gap. Not the mini gaps on the one minute time frame, but these gaps over here. And as we know, these gaps go down to 9K. I'm expecting 6K on BTC eventually. And anyone that disregards that, that's completely fine. The purpose of these videos is to create, you know, thought engagement, is to get you guys thinking and just breaking away from the land of delusion and just understanding not everything is as it seems and you're not going to get rich overnight. Yet there's a certain element and calculation and method to getting rich in this market. And again, rich depends on yourself, your current your current personal situations. You don't need to make a million. There's nothing wrong with making a few thousand or a few hundred guys. I, you know, I preach this all the time. A simple $500 profit or a thousand dollar profit, that's, that's potentially a month's worth of wages that you can utilize to pay your bills, your debts, your outgoings, go and treat yourself. You don't need to be greedy. You don't need to go out there and try and make a million in a single investment. Just forget what people are saying. Oh, I've made 15,000% on Doge or Flocky or whatever you bought, you know, Squid congratulations but it, it doesn't matter as long as you're making something that you're not making in the office or in a nine to five you're winning in my opinion and at the moment i feel we need to push up first fill in some areas and then start dumping down even further and that could start coming into play you know last year they blamed the crash on covid i thought bitcoin was a hedge against everything why did it crash you know the other day we saw inflation discussions btc crashed BTC went lower. So in theory, you have to strip away from what people are feeding you because whatever you're being fed, it's like a cult-like behavior. It's like religion. Crypto has become a religion and it's very, very scary because people are falling victim to these ideologies, you know, hedge against inflation, digital gold. There's no guarantee what will happen after regulations come into play. Ethereum's another good example. You know, how can that not be a bull run? At the moment, it's almost looking very simple. There is that potential head and shoulders, but regardless of that, despite the fact I think Ethereum does have a little possibility to push higher, that monthly does not look good. Huge wick needs to come in and get filled. Weekly, there's huge wicks down below. People look at it too simply. You know, oh, we've broken this resistance, it's now retesting, but overall, it's taken out the high and you need to be looking at these regions overall, even if you drag this lower. Because in theory, the real resistance and support is here. So this entire zone, price took out the high, got everyone excited, created an evening star formation, spiked up and retested as I covered with the members. We are now down below this level. This level is quite critical. We spiked up, took it out, closed back below on the weekly. Again, forget your dailies and four hours. Look at the weeklies and monthlies. It's closed back below. Another week back below, another week back below, another rejection on what currently looks to be in six and a half hours, another week potentially closing below. It's not looking very good. Overall, if you look at this as a battle of bulls and bears, we have closed below. The bears have gained control and closed back below resistance. The bulls have probably shit themselves and gone, okay, we need to get out. So now the bulls are pushing price up to get back in at a good standpoint. Not to mention, as I covered the liquidations, this is something I continuously cover with the members. There is, There are sorry, too many long positions in this market because everyone's thinking the same thing. So naturally, if price starts breaking below these levels, you are going to see a series of margin calls that will probably cause some people to want to jump out of their window. There are too many stop losses located here and you saw the liquidations that occurred, billions in liquidations just from a simple spike down. We've barely seen anything yet. And we just have to consider that at any given point in time, this could absolutely crumble. And if we're considering that we may be going into lockdowns next year as well, 
I personally think they're going to let us have Christmas. You know, if you lock people down in Christmas, they'll start rebelling, they'll start revolting. You know, it won't go too well. But then what could be happening from January onwards, as we saw in 2020, is lockdowns start coming into play. The economy starts collapsing. The S&P is at a critical point in time as well. How this world is currently going, how the markets are looking is incredibly frightening. Everything's very scary at the moment. I personally feel you should like you have to consider taking some profits and protect yourself because who knows what's around the corner. The governments are currently in control. Another good example, you know, if you're going to take the risk in coins, I see people a lot of people talk about coins like CSPR. Now, in theory, if you're going to take that risk, a lot of people talk about this coin. So the reason I'm covering it is because I personally I try to avoid getting involved in too many new coins. I'm a simple man, BTC, F, LTC, XRP. I hold a good amount of alts as well, but overall, I try not to jump in. Now, one thing I said to the members as this was pumping was just wait. Don't buy now. It's still not a bad price, but just wait because it's probably going to go back to 10 cents. It's almost there already. And in fact, it's probably going to go even lower. And the beauty is with coins like this, first of all, go to the monthly. Now, people are probably buying this because they've seen a spike that's gone all the way up here. So they're thinking, cool, if I buy this now, it's going to go back to here. No, that's a wick. Don't look at the wick. Look at the candle bodies because that's the only logical level that shows you where price has traded. Now, CSPR, first of all, you've got the monthly there. Candle bodies, you've got a realistic target of 30 cents. Go to the weekly, you've got a second realistic target of 60 cents. Go to the daily, you've got a third realistic target, which is great, of $4.3. Now this is how you make an investment at the right price. There's actually no harm in buying here, regardless, because it's such a good price in comparison to where it's been. But from a risk to reward perspective, if it goes from 14 up to 60, or even up to $4, where you've seen prices gone before on the daily time frame, that's a worthy investment in my opinion. And I would much rather be pushing capital into something like this at these prices, even though I know it's probably gonna go a bit lower first, even after a little pullback to the upside, you want to just be considering how to invest at the best prices. And this is why I prefer to buy near bottoms. I'm not going to put capital into into this because I'm just going into XRP. But again, if you buy this now and it goes back up to there, you've made 100 times, 100%, sorry. Goes down to 10 cents, goes back up to where it was, you've 100% again. So you want to be looking at coins that are arguably a lot lower and you can see where they're going up above before. It's easier to look at the market in that manner. Now, DOT is another example. Everyone was going crazy, parachains, this, this, that. Before We made that video before the crash, and everything has come through as we covered in the video. Look at all these crucial levels. Monthly, that doesn't look good. Not a single candle body has closed above the highs. All we've seen is rejections. I easily believe this will be back at $4 at some point very soon. Solana, we covered this in the last video. When it was around the $220 region, we've now pushed down to 160 Go to that monthly. And this is exactly what I teach everyone. The wicks have not been broken with candle bodies. If this monthly closes like this, you may be fortunate enough to see another retest of this $220 level or so, but Solana can easily just go all the way back down. Basically a pair or a coin that goes only up is only gonna go down in the same manner. And this for me has a big risk for just going back down to the absolute lows as well. That's a good example, just to throw that out there as well. I took profits on this around the 1.66 region or so. Again, it's crumbled lower. This is potentially a head and shoulders now. Shoulder, head, shoulder as well. So this may easily just come back up one more time. And you can see from the overall structure of this market, it's not looking too good. And, you know, this is a bull run. How can that not be a bull run? You have to kind of just understand where price is in relation to where it was. Significant gains considering this went from pretty much zero all the way up to $2 almost. That's a crazy amount of money that could have been made if you invested at the right prices. But because people do not invest at the right prices, they kind of expect it to go higher. But in theory, if you get in at the time when it's best to get in, which isn't hard to do, you just have to not get involved at the worst time, you will realize this is a great opportunity and a great amount of money that's been made. Now we can see clearly there's easily a standpoint down here of 60 cents. And because I've taken them profits out, I'm waiting for price to go down below these territories to reinvest again. It's all about just scaling out. And Cadena is another example, very similar to ADA on this support floor, the way it was holding. I kind of said this clearly as well. Same as ADA, don't be fooled by this because everyone's saying breakout triangle, backflip, somersault, 360 degree, click flip. Everyone's saying all this stuff, you know, Ollie. But 
it breaks. And now it's broken, that changes everything completely because now this trend line is bearish and in play. If I duplicate this and put this down here, there's a bearish channel in play and we are progressively going lower and lower and lower. This is currently holding that floor as well, which is what we're expecting. So there may be a temporary relief rally and potentially another bull trap on the cards here that can come back to the trend line or $16 and then roll over even further. And the next thing you know, these coins are back at the bottom. And what's going to happen if the market goes back down to the bottom for a lot of these coins? People will always scream bull run until the end of a bear market. That's always how it goes. People scream buy the dip, buy this, buy that. But eventually you've bought so many dips that you know, you've know you just over flooded yourself in the market. Sometimes it's better to just wait. And as history has proven time and time again, the market will always collapse when you least expect it, especially in this current phase. So I just think it's very important, guys. Again, Sands, another example as well. Just crumbled lower as expected. Simple trend line retest over here. This could easily be back at three to two dollars very, very soon as well. So I think it's just important. Kind of the main purpose of this video is not just to really give you a technical insight because I can't give away what I'm giving to the members. So I feel it's important to share the more psychological aspects as well because I just want you guys to see a different side and at least consider it and just kind of give me a shot and understand that what I'm teaching you here is with your best interests at heart. Whereas these people do not have your best interests at heart. And the biggest concern is, is it's brainwashing people as well. So now that you've seen the crash, hopefully you can kind of, and it, this is a crash by the way, it's a real dip, but it's also considered a crash. And again, low, lower, low, lower, low. So it could easily push up high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Even if it comes back up to 1.2, let that be, I'll take more money out. But please just try and take this on board and just be very, very careful. Try not to rush in to any new investments. If anything, if you got in at a good price like ourselves, profit taking should probably be on your mind. And I think that should be your utmost priority right now. If you see another series of crashes down below, again, in the Innovation Markets app, we've got buy orders, we've got regions of interest and almost 40 other pairs that we are pretty much waiting to see come through. But at this current point in time, in no man's land, huge wicks to the downside, the market could not be more threatening if it tried. So please just be very, very careful take into consideration that externally as well there are other factors going on that may impact this market if inflation keeps going up if we go into a covid lockdown it's very unlikely we're going to be seeing crypto go higher and unfortunately at the moment it does look like we have currently seen the bull run and at the moment it does look like all season has already happened so just take you know you can take it with a pinch of salt you can treat it as gospel whatever you feel but i just feel it's beneficial to consider this side that no one's gonna show you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this breakdown. I hope it's been a beneficial <laughs> video to say the least. Hopefully it's a nice little Sunday evening view for all of you as well. But regardless guys, as always, please like, subscribe, leave a comment if need be. Let us know what else you guys want covered. If there's any other topics in particular as well, I'm happy to do that. But it's gonna be a busy week ahead next week, judging from the market. It's gonna be a lot of members content coming forward. Crypto Weekly Outlook tomorrow as well. Really looking forward to breaking down the market in depth. But regardless, have a great weekend, guys, and I'll be seeing you in the next video next week.